14 years ago I set out to make a computer that was fast enough to keep up with me. I retired basically uh, April 8 and I moved on to making April 9 Trinity with the help of Corey McCracken, Ackeson aka Joshua Faria, and Jason James Winston, three of my close friends, and I decided to name the computer in their honor, Trinity. Following that legacy, since the Trinity looks a lot like an infinity symbol but triangular, I had figured I'd move on to another system with an infinity theme, and I would name it Mobius. It was actually inspired by a necklace I got from my mom to share my infinite love of her, with an infinity symbol wrapped around a heart. So this is sharing my love for all those people who came to help me and actually gave a crap about me putting this together. I wanted to build a computer that was going to carry me about roughly until I'm 50. And this here is going to be the computer to do it, with enough power to do everything I needed to do and then some. So. But my first ever purchase of Noctua fans, I get to say, wow, the Chroma fans are awesome. They even have little uh, silicone grommets on here where you can actually change what color you want them to be. I went with blue, and by the way, if you go and buy a Noctua fan uh, with these uh, Chromex things, you might want to invest in some of these Chromex packages uh, to change the kits because they only come with about four of them and you want to have about eight so these packs come with 16 so they're usually good for two sets of fans okay I got two four terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drives for store one for video editing one for gaming I got a Sabrent 4 Plus I mean Rocket 4 Plus which is one of the fastest hard drives on the market big baller style for my you know, main drive. I got Chromax custom plates for my heat sink with swappable inlays. I got a Sapphire Nitro 5700 XT Plus and uh, that's actually from Trinity right now uh, and at least until the market goes down I can afford an actual video card to go in this system. Alright, I have the Ryzen 9 5900 X, a 24 core processor uh, <laughs> that can go up to 4.75 uh, gigahertz uh, <laughs> uh, speed. Uh, Corsair SF750 power supply, platinum rated, G-Skill Trident Z-Royal 4000 megahertz. Got myself some Noctua thermal paste, which I kind of overlooked the fact that the Noctua NHD15 comes with some. What? Okay. I got the ROG Strix X570 iGaming motherboard in order to put this all into. And the Liam Lee TU150 teeny little case to put it all in. And this, my friends, is Project Mobius. The computer I've been wanting to build for a long time. So I hope you love joining me today as my friend Joseph takes over chords for me. And uh, let's have some fun, huh? Forgive my uh, protege here if there happens to be any awkward camera work today. We're kind of new to this, so uh, consider this a test run. A test run and the build video at the same time, so have some good laughs. Enjoy the content. So today, we got the TU-150 by Elian Lee. An amazing little case. Everything has pop-off panels. No screws, none of that janky stuff here. You just pop it off and there you go. I'd also like to give a special thanks to the following people on this, you know, thing here. Include my mom, Sarah, Diane, Corey McCracken, <laughs> uh, and uh, eventually uh, Chris Fontaine as well, uh, once I get the Mobius printer, uh, print sticker out, and my buddy Joseph, who's doing the camera work right now, as you can see right here. Chris Fontaine will be put on here after I get the sticker done, and then it will be uh, clear-coded and put on there. Anybody else puts any donations even after the fact? You're welcome to donate to Cyrus, C-Y-R-U-S underscore D-R-A-K-A-I-N at Yahoo.com via PayPal. Once again, that's Cyrus underscore Drakane at Yahoo.com for PayPal. Okay, with that out of the way, and any shameless plugs and whatnot, this is an unsponsored video by Kraken. Kraken didn't sponsor me, but I'll tell you what. I do not promote miners breaking on my, you know, presence. However, I'd like to have a good drink before I get started. So, as you can see, this is the workroom, workroom we're working in here, okay? In order to fit this teeny weeny little space for a high-end gaming computer, yeah, I gotta have teeny weeny little parts. So, 
One of the opening parts we're going to use here today is the Corsair SF750. This is a platinum rated power supply, which means it has a high reliability to hit the deals at once. It also runs a silent operation mode. So when it's not getting towards that 750, it's running on lower voltage and whatnot, and lower wattage, this fan will not spin whatsoever. Okay? That guy is going to go in right here. In there, okay? You're kind of off in limbo land. I can see the camera. Angle. All right? So it's going to go right here. All right? Okay, so the other parts you need to know that are going to go in here is the core of the whole unit, which will be one of the first few things going in. Okay? After that. This is the ROG Strix X570i gaming motherboard. Okay, it also features Wi-Fi 6, which is incredibly fast, which I've already tested out here for my, uh, my broadband. My broadband goes about roughly 850 by 450, roughly for speed, okay? For Wi-Fi, I'm getting about 420 by 410. For, so that's pretty damn impressive, you know, that's basically half a gigabit up and down, okay? Very impressive stuff. I hope to see what I can do with that going forward, okay? I'm going to go ahead and get this part out of the way right now. This is the rear plate I.O. This is where everything for the motherboard plugs in. That's just going to go right back here in this empty slot right there on the case. And I'm just going to slide it in there and give it a pippity poppity. And boom, just like that, it is now in place. And it actually has a little cushioned protective shield on it. All right, see that? Awesome. It's got a little anti-static shield on here just to kind of absorb some stuff and push it off the case, so just in case, you know, there's any um, build bungling, shall I call it. Okay, and I have it snapped into place. Just want to make sure everything's nice and firm. All right, so I'm going to grab my screwdriver down here. Get me a Phillips head for this. And let's see. Oop. Which one of these guys will I need? I believe the power supply requires the same kind of connectors as my fans for screws. So we're going to go ahead and pop off this back plate. And just so you can all see, this is the spaghetti farm I'm initially dealing with coming out of the case. Everything here has already been test fitted so I know it all fits. Everything's already been test ran, I know it all goes. But for those people who donate money, I want it all to basically see how this all goes together so you can have an idea of what is going in this teeny little box and why is it such a big damn deal. Okay? <laughs> it is quite the big deal. It is unbelievably powerful when actually fully built. As as the beta tester, it, it, it outperforms anything I could have ever dreamed he, he built. It, it's just... <laughs> I don't have words for how strong it really is. All I know is I have not been able to push it past 20%. It is unbelievably powerful, and the idea behind this unit that I want to get done is I want to have it to where there can be two options that Joseph and I can do. Joseph will be streaming and gaming at the same time at 1080p, ultra settings. I will be on Picarto drawing my comics and streaming simultaneously while listening to music from Mobius and he will not see me whatsoever because I'll be on a second user on a secondary client thanks to a little bit of uh, a little toggling there and magic with Windows I mean typically Windows wants you to have a server version if you're uh, if you're doing more than one user but I'm not I don't need a server edition for only two people using it Maybe if I did five, maybe ten, or something stupid. Yeah, probably. Like twenty, a couple hundred, you know. Actual, point, actual corporation level stuff. Yeah. And me, I'm using this more on a personal level for the fact it's just more or less a two-in-one supercomputer meant to handle all of our basic needs in one unit. So we got some uh, standard machine screws here getting in the power supply. And this little guy, I really love how they have it set up because they give you a little junction cord back here, which I will show you in just one moment, that allows me to route the power to the back of the case here. 
even though the power supply is connected way over here, you can plug this cord in right here. Plug it right in there. Tuck that in. Yeah, I might want to get a, zoom, get a good zoom on that. Okay. It's, like, it's, it's a bit far right. away. It's, there we go. That's better. Okay. So Perfect. You see it right there? Yep. Okay. And it goes all the way out to here on the back. It is a very long cable. <laughs> okay, so how do they do that? Well, glad you asked. Pretty sure you didn't. It runs the cable through the top of the case right there, going all the way to the back. Which is actually kind of ingenious. Oh, did you show did you show them how the uh, the handle works? The what? The handle. <laughs> oh yes, the handle. The handle's amazing. I I'm sorry, that that, that, that was a bit of genius. <laughs> I fat fingered the I oh well, I just pulled a Linus. <laughs> and you make you make fun of him all the time. I love making fun of him. He's lovable. He is lovable. I like that. Okay, so I just me stuff. <laughs> using two neodymium magnets, nowhere to keep a full pop-up effect. The handle has a pop-up that I really like. Mobility, anything like that. And when you have the lid back on here, it goes flush with everything else there. To keep a nice uniform look. So a retractable handle for mobility for a 28 pound computer, pretty gosh dang awesome, if you ask me. <laughs> and even if you did, I'ma tell you. All right. General operating temperatures include anywhere from 42 to about 50 degrees Celsius. Mm. Am I right? 42 idle, uh, 54 in action. Okay. I haven't seen it go up that high, but yeah. So the fans do a really good job. You want to see what makes you feel like a real baller? Yeah, it's, that's the so stuff right there. Just go and Z Royal, baby. Oh, I just slide that up. Am I in the shot here? Oh yeah, you're you're 100 percent in the shot. You can see that. <laughs> All right, so we got that G Scale Love right here. You slide that open. You get a nice set of cleaning cloth with this. A little unnecessary. Yeah, it kind of comes. It comes with some cleaning cloth. And you got that beautiful chrome ram. Okay. And believe me, they they light they light up real good. <laughs> okay. Let me get one of these guys out of here. All right. So we got that going on here. Get that satisfying. Yeah, you would. He's uh, been, he's been, he's been waiting to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's for all you out there who wanted to get the little plastic strippy goodness. You know what? It's so nice we can do it twice. Oh. Ah. Oh, yeah. Let me let me let me. You brought a little bit out of the shot there, but let me okay. let me get that. Oh. Bringing it bringing it about twenty about. Right there. That's perfect. Look at that. Look at that little baby. Isn't that not wonderful? It's so, it's so, shi it's so shiny you can barely read it. <laughs> okay. And that is some beautiful RAM there. I've been wanting to peel off the sticker on these guys for a while now because they're going to go in to the X570i motherboard. 4,000 4, megahertz right out the gate. Okay. So. Oh, tell... Did you tell did you tell them how fast this bugger is sold Windows? Okay, well, I took this over to Corey McCrackens originally to flash the BIOS so I could put the 5900 in, you know, in this motherboard. Okay, because the motherboard right off the hop did not support this processor. He had a 3700 we took out of his computer and put it into this computer and then flashed it accordingly. Thank you, Corey McCracken, for your aid there. Uh, <laughs> that was a game changer, and I want to thank Noctua for the little weird, janky screwdriver thing that came with that, because that thing was a godsend. That little chrome L-bar screwdriver for installing the DH-15. What did you do with that thing? I actually left it at his place. Okay. Oh, so you found out where it was? I don't know. I haven't asked him. But, worth it. That thing saved my ass eight times during the initial build. Okay. It allowed me to basically pry up the, you know, the heat sink that was sticking for him. It allowed us to fix a, uh... SD, uh, was no way, um, NVMe issue that we had. It allowed me to uninstall his processor super easy and install mine, you know, and reinstall several times on the quick applique. And mwah, beautiful stuff. Let me, get okay. a, let me get a close up of the board. Okay. So, this is the X570 i gaming board. XF75i? XF5 XF, mm -hmm. XF, XF570i. Go down, darn you. Okay, camera. There we go. Perfect. X570. Okay. X570. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to peel off that ROG sticker. Oh. And a little bit of peely goodness for you. Okay. And underneath that, I have that already unscrewed. This is going to be the heat sink 
for the main hard drive for Windows. Okay? And uh, this is neat. I like this. So I'm going to take off this little heat sink too. Got some little arbitrary sinkage. Alright, get myself a little screwdriver. We're going to unscrew this little plate right here. You specifically went and got more screwdrivers just for this task. Actually, I did it because your video card was being a pain in my ass regarding oh, getting yeah, off. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk it. about that. <laughs> yeah. He has a 1060 that is having some fan issues where the fan seems to be moving at 100% regardless. I assume that the thermal sensor on it is officially shot because there seems to be nothing wrong with any of the components visually on the board. I haven't had a circuit testing on it done. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not... Thermal throttling, it's not having thermal issues, it's running perfectly fine, but the fans are moving at 100 you know, percent, which is really annoying anytime you do any my minor arbitrary task. Indeed. Okay, so. Wait, 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 what did you call it? Huh? What, what nickname did you give it? <laughs> uh, well, you call it Brightburn. I do. And uh, I call it the, uh, the wind force, or the, uh, the gale force, or I don't know, I don't even have a name for it, really. <laughs> Oh, yes, I gotta grab the. Yeah, I'm, I'm just having the camera follow you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I do like being followed a little bit. Let's them give something to look at. Okay, so. So oh, this well. motherboard has a weird little thing that kind of bugs me. And I totally overlooked it the first time I put this together. We have a front HD audio on here. But in order to connect the front HD audio, Way in here underneath all those heat sinks and all that crap, there's the 8-pin power connector. Okay. Well, oh, you're doing that now. Nine. Okay, so what you got to do is get this special little adapter that comes with the motherboard. Okay. And this little guy just goes right in there. Okay. And at that point... Isn't that going to be in the way of all the heat sinks? It is. That's why I got to install it now. Because it's going to be a pain in my butt later. So... All right. This little guy came in the mail from Amazon. I got this on there. I decided to do a little research. This little guy is the Rocket 4 Plus by Sabrent. And it is a PCI Express Gen 4. And it is stupid fast. Yeah. It's rated for 7,000 by 5,000. 7,000 write. No, 7,000 read by 5,000 write. Okay? And it comes in a neat little... You know, like yeah, a little bait case. The case is nice. Comes in a little copper bait case, which I'm glad it was in a copper case because it was left out in the sun, you know, while I was at work, and a little package just hanging from my mailbox. Really kind of made me butt pucker realizing that because they said it was going to be delivered the next day, but then it got delivered a day early, so, you know, I found out about it and I had to rush home, grab it, and. I remember it. I was also at work. <laughs> okay. So you open this up. I kind of split the thing in there, not realizing that there wasn't a seal, just that the sticker was used as a hinge. Okay, and inside this is this teeny, weeny, itty bitty little thing. It okay. looks pretty close to a flat, to a uh, extra large flash drive that's about the size of it. And it's thin. It is stupid thin. Now, Severin was smart though. They made the top sticker of this thing out of copper or a copperized coating of something because it's actually metalized. PCI Gen 4 moves stupid fast, which means it puts out a stupid amount of heat. So in order to mitigate that heat, you have to have a heat sink. Oh, darn thing. I just happen to have one of those. How about that? So we go ahead and install that right here on the motherboard. Push it in the slot. Hold it down for a moment. Grab our teeny weeny itty bitty holy crap, how do you hold on to that little screw? And the answer is magnetic tips, baby. And then we screw that right on into the board. I don't know if you can see me on there. Yeah, no, they can see you. Okay. Excellent. As long as you hold it up like that, they can see you. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to do it so I can get your face and the board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the bad camera work, I'm still new to this. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not too terrible. It should be, I'm got, everything's in the shot and, um, until you move out of the shot. <laughs> Until I move out of the shot, those are the key words. Okay, so. Everything you've done, I've gotten in the shot, so. Hey. Okay. So. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I'll let the audience be the judges on that. Alright. Well, 
but I can't see you doing that. Okay, so I'm putting back together the heat sink on here. You're not going to be able to see that because I'm kind of tilting it up in a funky angle to make sure I got it right. I'm also trying to keep get the camera on you a little bit too, so... Uh... Yep. Let's see, so these long boys, I think these are the long ones. Okay, so the super long screw goes right in here where the heat sink was to hold down the massive thermal pad that they have provided with the heat sink. Hooray! Thank you, Asus. Now, anybody who gets this board, I would highly recommend that you take this whole heat sink thing off and check out to see if the VRM underneath this here has a thermal pad under it. Because if it doesn't, this little fan right here will ramp up to 9,000 RPMs and sound like a tiny jet in your computer. And it will drive you through the wall trying to figure out what is going on here. <laughs> you will not like it. It will not be fun. Bad times around for all. Okay. So is it Asus or is it just Asus? I like to call them Asus. Okay. They may be Asus. Uh, some people call them Asus. I call them Asus because that's what I hear a lot of other people put it together as. Hmm. So I'm sticking together with the popular consensus, and that is Asus. Well, at least we're not Acer. Acer is hit and miss. Some of Acer's products are really good. Some of them are built for the low-grade consumer, and, you know, being a performance nut that I am, I do not find them very appealing. And I would... you, ever, uh, you ever use an Acer netbook? <laughs> no, I don't use netbooks. Netbooks yeah, are gutless wonders. They're, they're absolutely horrible. The best thing I've ever gotten from Acer is the current monitor that is attached that is normally attached to Mobius would be the Acer Predator. Like the only uh, only netbook I touch right now is my little Toshiba netbook, and that is a uh, that's one I got for free. I believe I named it uh, Feta. Works like a charm though. Yeah, it's uh, it works in a pinch. I got Puppy Linux on it and Windows Seven uh, Lite, and it does. A magnificent job for what it's meant to do, and that's getting on the net and troubleshooting basic, you know, arbitrary errors and whatnot. Stuff that, you know, and, oh yeah, and being being the kind of thing that I would uh, make as a casualty of war in case I got a virus instead of putting it on my main computer. Yeah. Being free, I don't have to worry about that computer getting viruses, because if, you know, if it does, it does. You know, if something goes critical with it, I can either repair it or throw it away and not feel like I've lost anything. Unlike Trinity or Brightburn? Yeah, Trinity's got my last work on it. I would not want to lose that. <laughs> That'd be a bad deal. Whereas Brightburn, I, re I recently wiped because it was having a support of issues. Yes, and it started working pretty good after I got done working on it. Yeah, no, he but we has no issues now. But we migrated over to Mobius, and Mobius has kind of been the go-to ever since. So, to put, to put things on a power scale, I would say Trinity is at least six times more powerful than my computer. Yeah, if we're going by Dragon Ball style power scaling, yeah, Trinity is six times more powerful than his unit. And Mobius is about 30 times more powerful than that. Mobius is, <laughs> Mobius is about six times more powerful than Trinity. Gaming-wise, Mobius is probably about 55-60% mm, faster. But as far as multitasking capability and having a massive overhead, you're talking about a night and day difference between Trinity and Trinity and Mobius. Okay, so we will set the motherboard here for a moment. And we'll put in that pimp RAM. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, what we want, that's, what, that's what everyone here wants to see. Okay, and this is an RGB RAM. I didn't buy it for the RGB and the Chrome bling. Believe it or not, I actually thought about getting the Corsair LPX RAM, uh, but 3600 36, didn't seem to vibe with me as well. So I decided I wanted 4000. I want overkill, and and believe me, believe you me, it is overkill. And 32 gigs of RAM might not set for me. I might take this out and put this towards Joseph's future rig, and I may upgrade to 64 gigs. Because I only have two slots to upgrade with here, and it is just meant to hold down the fort until I decide whether I really need 64 or whether 32 is sufficient. Right now, 32 seems to be sufficient for the work I'm doing. Oh yeah, no, it's... Because the pipeline of 4,000 megahertz to a 4,200 megahertz uh, processor, which I have currently mid-clocked, I have already tested out 40, 47... Uh, 4775 is where it hits the thermal ceiling and says, uh, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. I'm crashing now. You alright? 
Yeah, I need to just get back to the program. It's being a, I wanted to decide to open up the uh, Windows key for some reason. Okay. Yeah, it's because the Windows key is the Windows a logo on the bottom of this tablet. Oh, so if I accidentally hit that. That okay. functions as it, yes. Okay, <laughs> the things they, things they don't tell me about the newer, the newer versions of tablets. Well, it's not a tablet, it's a hybrid. Okay, excuse me, Mr. Hybrid. It's the hybrid. It's a much different piece of technology than what you used to, young man. I'm used to using an actual tablet. Yeah, tablets are gutless. They I, are. Couldn't, I couldn't be bothered. I mean, you give me you give me a tablet, I won't say no. Am I gonna go on my way to buy a tablet? No. I mean, my fa my father has has an old iPad somewhere. Okay. That still apparently functions to this day, somehow. Okay, so like I said, Ryzen 5900X. Okay. Beautiful processor. I always thought it was funny that they packed that much nothing in the box, and this is what you're getting right here in that box. I always found that hilarious. Okay. <laughs> oh, did you show them? Did you show them the, the little uh, hole for the thing? Oh yeah, and it has a little hole on the side too. I'll show you exactly what you're getting. Now, Toyplicity on Amazon was who I bought this from. Uh, I originally thought I was buying it from Amazon themselves until Amazon decided to correct me when there was a price change, um, and they decided not to you know, honor me any difference. But Toyplicity was nice enough and they decided to refund me 20 bucks as a birthday gift to me, which, awesome, thank you so much guys, you made my birthday. I really appreciate it. That $20 makes a night and day difference. That's that's another two, three days worth of meals for me right now, especially considering oh. I dumped my budget on this. The other, uh, the other thing, we were having an issue with the Predator where it kept flashing 240 whenever we turned on HDR. Finish the story for me. Oh, man. oh yes. <laughs> we contacted uh, well, was an Acer regarding this. Um, the Acer Predator. We hooked it up to Mobius while we were out in uh, while we were out on my birthday recently with uh, deciding to give him a preliminary travel run. It'll be our first travel run we took, and we realized that there was a weird bug with this monitor. The bug, the bug, the bug being. Maybe I need more alcohol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the bug being is that uh, the monitor switched over and had a frames per second monitor in the top right corner, but it only said what the monitor's max push out was, which is 240 at that time. And, and every time we switched to HDR, if you try to turn off the, you know, the frame per second monitor, it would turn off HDR. You couldn't have HDR on without having that on, and you couldn't have that on without turning HDR on. They were interlinked somehow. The guy told me, he's like, 240, huh? You're actually pushing the full 240. You know, I've, I've been working here for a while now, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody who can actually push the two, full 240 on that thing. I says, yeah, I kind of went overkill with the computer and optimized a few things, and it pushes the two, full 240 on the monitor on some games, uh, especially when you're playing retro stuff. Uh, it pushes 240 on most, almost everything. And, don't, don't let him lie to you. <laughs> and the guy was like, I've never heard of that. And I'm like, well, thank you. I'm very proud of myself. I want to thank everybody out there who helped contribute towards Mobius, mainly my mom and my, my Aunt Diane and my cousin Sarah. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> and eventually, I guess Joseph will contribute towards another part of this thing, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, he's in between financial securities. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, so. I will be, be putting... A considerable pu push towards it as well. Okay. I'm look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look to get the monitor at the very least. <laughs> and again, yeah. it's just using my predator right now, and the predator is doing fine, honestly. <laughs> the predator does fine, but if we want to put double monitor out here in the living room, it's probably yeah. more ideal to have like a dual quad HD, so we can have one monitor that functions as two, so we can put it as something as small as a little round mid table, and you know, not take up a lot of the room. Well, the couch master allows them to have the keyboard and mouse there. Yeah, so the Predator kind of takes up some room. <laughs> yeah, the Predator takes up some room. If you want to put a secondary monitor to it, we don't have enough desk space. I'm no, we don't. That. Okay. We really don't. And let's see. Where are the little boys? Where are the little boys? Where are the little boys? The time I screw for my motherboard. <laughs> You okay, bud? Yeah, I just... This thing is, heavy, is, is kind of heavy and it weighs on my wrist a little bit, so I'm trying to hold it on with my elbow. You set it on your lap right now. You're sitting down anyway. For the moment. For the moment. I, I know Meanwhile... I, can't, I know I can't stay sitting down, so I'm trying to get used to it on my... Ow! 
So I told Joseph we're going to build him a rig. We're going to go with the AM4 rig because they can start off low with like a $50, $60 processor. And then when he has the money, we can upgrade from there. Even if he buys the low engine a dink, you know, processor as a placeholder at that point, it'll still be better than what he currently has in his computer Brightburn. Okay? It'll be almost three times better than what he's got. Oh. Okay. I should probably explain why I call it Brightburn. Yeah, go ahead. Tell him the story. <sighs> Well, it, it, it kind of start kind of starts with Dan's old Dan's old mice. I believe it was the Red Dragon X or something like that. Uh, the Red Dragon, which uh, Kakarias or what is it the uh, something like that? Yeah, it's it's one of the gaming mice. They like so. It has a, it has this little red uh, thing on it, kind of kind of like any other mouse. It lights up. And it, and it annoys is. him, because you can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. You turn off the computer, that son of a bitch is still on. Yeah. Great burn. Glows. I mean, like... I, I'm sorry, even Trinity and Mobius don't quite put out the same brightness he can. <laughs> he just... He, 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 he basically glows red like a red sun. He just... He, it's so... It literally, it literally illuminates the entire room in red. And any time I was on camera with Dan, he, he complained that I was red. <laughs> you were the red boy. You were the red son of Krypton. The red son of Krypton. <laughs> and now he knows why. <laughs> yeah, it was friggin' ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't stand the radiant luminescence that came from that damn mouse when I had it. I like the mouse. Fourteen dollars, amazing mouse. You will not get a mouse that good for that money. Okay? It had weights in it. It had sleeve braided cable. You know, it felt good. Mouse acceleration was a little wonky because you know it wasn't really gamer optimal for that kind of crap. But uh, other than that, I would say it was a rock solid mouse for fourteen bucks. But now you get better ones. You can get like an MMO kind of mouse with all the side buttons and all that. And the light actually does go the freak off. Okay, so. You know, Red Dragon products are not terrible. I mean, they're really good, honestly. For the money, they're totally worth it, especially if you need a placeholder until you can buy yourself a Scimitar Pro, you know, a Scimitar Elite, or, you know, a Razer Naga Trinity, you know, kind of mouse, you know, something. Oh, oh, making fun of my mouse now. <laughs> I wasn't making fun of it, I said it was better than the Red Dragon. Debatable. Debatable? I don't <laughs> know about that, buddy. Come on, let's give your mouse some credit. I mean, okay? it, it's, it's, it's nice, don't get me wrong. The plates kind of annoy me just because of any any grime that gets in there is a pain in the ass to clean out. Oh yeah, well that's just context in general, bro. Sorry to tell you. That's <laughs> fair, I guess. All right, so this is the humongous chungus that is going in my computer. Okay, this enormous video card is the Sapphire fifty seven hundred XT Nitro Plus. That's a mouthful, is it not? <laughs> you, you got the box lying around. I got the box lying around. And give, give me give me a shot of the box so people can get understand what you're saying. That that thing <laughs> right there. Okay, that is what it was, that is what was in Trinity. Okay, this was in Trinity. I had a choice, given a limited budget, to either get this enormous hunk of metal and awesomeness or the Nvidia 2070. And while ray tracing was a nice appeal for me. It really wasn't worth the $140 difference, okay? Because when I got this, this was $449 plus some, plus some change, okay? So it was like $469 after I was done, okay? You said you said it's comparable to the $2,700? Yeah, uh, the 2070 uh, Super. That's approximately what Scrooge McDuck, my father, has in his. Yeah. But that thing Roth? is <laughs> able Roth? to push out... <laughs> Raw frame rate, this thing actually performs better, and it has gotten better with each consecutive update. And I have to commend AMD for you know pushing out some nice updates where their product generally age better because they get you know a little performance tweaks as time goes on. Okay, and I'm happy with them. I, I, I genuinely am. As an Nvidia user, most of my life, I have to say, I am actually surprised at just how much bang you get for your buck with those. Okay, now I want to show this. Joseph, y'all want you to get that in the camera there, okay? 
This is how humongous this card is, and this is why I decided to go with the Lian Lee TU-150 instead of the Dan Case A4 version 4. Okay? Put that up right next to it. Uh, right next to it. Up. Stand it up. Uh, stand it up vertically. What do you mean stand up vertically? Like that. Just, just show next to it. Show them just how big that thing is. Okay? <laughs> it's as big as the case. <laughs> it's as big as the case that way, and it's as big as the case this way. Okay? <laughs> how do you get it in there? Well, you tilt it in, baby. You tilt it in, and you just kind of slide it into place. Then you move the locking plate out of the way. Slide it forward and out of the way. All right. Now he was actually a bit worried because there was a bit. There was a bit of a. You called it lag, I think, with it, where it was kind of holding it, uh, kind of not uh, fully secure. It was kind of tilting downwards a little bit. Yeah, sag. Sag. Sorry. Now, I thought about repasting this, and I may do it later, but right now the card's still in warranty, and I kind of don't want to dick with it. So, I have plenty of thermal paste to go around for later, and I might come back to that. I, I, I wouldn't, honestly, if it is under warranty, ju just because of all, this, all the stuff I've had under warranty, and how much that saved my ass, I would not dick with it if that would break the warranty. But if warranty goes up, I will eventually take care of that. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know exactly what you're saying, because I, I, I had to use the warranty on one of my old Dell laptops. And then I went, and then, much to my friend here's chagrin, I think that's the right word, I, I was dumb and bought a $1,400 laptop a while back. <sighs> yeah. He, and the, re the reason behind this was there was a game we were going to play together. And it wouldn't even work on my laptop. And what game was that? Do I have to say it? It It'd won't die. You probably will die. Uh, it, it's still installed in that thing. Even though I wiped it, it's still installed. It won't die. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Aliens. Colonial Marines. Uh, yes, that. <laughs> Groan. <laughs> Groan. The, uh... The, the the story for that can be found on my friend's other channel. <laughs> mm. We don't we don't talk about that. <laughs> there's the there's the exodia of uh, video games. Uh, it's the forbidden one. Fair enough. <laughs> Honestly, I hope they, I hope they make another one, a better one. I hope it's not made by Gearbox Software. Please God no. And Randy Pitchfraud. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> I don't. Well, then I'd have nothing to say ever. Oh, I know. <laughs> I would never have anything to say. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> uh, so, I heard the I heard the doogle there. I never have anything to say. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna connect this here. And oh, as a uh, as another as another test, I think it was pushing 300 frames in Stormwind. Uh, 210 consistently, 300 peak. It, it pulled 310, 300 peak in Stormwind. What was that? What, that, what, that was Stormwind on, setting, uh, ultra settings, IP What character? Uh, on Ebon. Jesus Christ. On my flaming boy. And for context, Ebon literally has the manual's worth. Of craftable items. Oh my god. So many items. And also flaming armor that has its own, you know... Unique... Unique, uh... Animations. <laughs> yep. Okay, so the reset switch goes here. And it, the power switch goes here. Uh, I, think, I think for contrast, Trinity can only push, what, maybe 100 in Stormwind? 110 peak is what I managed to push Trinity. Well, what was the consistent? 75? Uh, about 85, roughly. Uh, hey, I was only 10 frames off. Yeah. 10 frames to a gamer, though, makes the world a difference. Oh, it really does. <laughs> and as as a uh, as another thing, Brightburn got maybe 30 frames then. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Training was powerful. This is a whole other ball game, though. Okay, so I got the video card in there. I've got the power supply in there. Okay. So now... All we right. have to make sure. And now I got a, I got a good shot of that. Okay. So now we got to make sure before we start putting anything obstructive in there, 
we got to make sure the cables get in. Right, because, because the last time, last time he did this, he did not hook up the front port. Mm -hmm. And there was another port that he also forgot to hook up. Well, the other one I can't hook up because I need a special adapter for that. Oh, you don't have it? No. But you did. Nope. I didn't bother buying it. I don't find a need for USB Type-C in the front because they're going to have absolutely nothing that hooks to USB Type-C yet. Well, I mean, I can charge my phone. You don't have a Type-C to Type-C. I will go. I will specifically go out and get one. Just, just for kids and giggles. Just to see how much faster Mobius can charge it than the wall. You're incorrigible, you know that? No. That's dumb. Just use a USB type USB 3.0 type A and be done with it. <laughs> You're terrible. You hurt my soul thinking about that. But he, he would charge it faster than the wall, wouldn't he? Huh? Wouldn't Mobius charge it faster than the wall? Mm, no. You don't think so? Nah. Because it, it does it does support fast charging. So. It does support fast charging. Faster though? No. There's a, there's a throttle limit on which how much you can push voltage wise in USB. That's and those are awesome. usually regulated by the you know charge device itself. Which is, I mean that's that that would be. I mean, the only other thing I could think of was I have to use Type C to Type C in order to push pictures off my phone, right? Or I have to get a new Type C to USB. Mm -hmm. Now, these case fans, I think, are just neat as shit. Oh, yes, the case fans. Okay. Noctua has really nailed down the art of making a quiet but effective little fan. And they also feel nice. They got that like almost like fiberglass, you know, filled, you know, uh, you know, plastic feel, and they almost feel kind of, almost kind of metallic. Do tell, do tell about the first time you put them in, Dan. Huh? Remember the first time you put them in? Mm hmm. You put them in, and they were making a noise. Ah, yes. The tightness and tolerances of this case. Or something to behold, for sure. <laughs> it is definitely something to behold. I, I... <laughs> I was not it a was fan. Bumping, it was bumping against something, I think. This fan right here that I am currently installing was rubbing against the case itself because of how snug it was. It is very, very snug in there. There was a lot of com a lot of components in a very itty bitty space. Yes, it is also a bit is also a bit of a, a bit of a nuclear toaster, but at the, at the very least, the fans by Noctua are they're they're amazing. They they keep they keep the bug they keep they keep them at a decent working temperature. Now I'm gonna keep these a little bit loose so I can slide them up and down once I get the DH15 in, so I can find out how to line up a perfect wind tunnel. Because I did not make that adjustment prior for obvious reasons. This was only meant to be a mock-up originally. I mean, if it, if it stops him from if it stops him from raising the the, the uh, temperature of my of the room by a couple degrees, that'd be great. But yeah. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> the room I can't save you with. Okay, the uh, the internals of the case I can help you with. <laughs> Yeah, he, he definitely raises the uh, temperature of the room by at least three to four degrees, I'd say, just and by you know, himself. I don't understand people who build these high-end computers, and they're like, oh, well, it keeps a respectable 75 to 85 degrees. Uh, no, I don't find that respectable. That's, that is a, that's a portable oven, Okay. Set your pan, fan profiles, people. Would that, be, would that be 75 to 80 degrees Celsius? Celsius, or? yes. I don't speak in Fahrenheit when it comes to computers. Yeah. I speak in Fahrenheit when I'm going outside or in my own apartment, which I'm still, for whatever reason, melting in here. And here's probably why. Open up, you. There we go. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, let me get that in the shower. You put that in the shower. <laughs> I had to open up the vent above my head. Yes, the vent. It was, it was turned. It was closed. I'm gonna go back to the computer now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. There we go. No. No. 
I might have to stand up for this. Yeah, okay. I want a better shot of that. Power switch, HD, LED, reset switch. I don't need this. This is useless to me. Okay. Then you just toss it on the floor. No, I tossed it in my toolbox. Thank you. Noted. Alright, so the second fan we will install will be towards the front of the case as an intake fan, which will be yet another S12A. And I will commend Noctua on these that they are absolutely great on air intake as well because I have some Silverstone magnetic high density fan filters and I've already cleaned these things at least three times this month because they have collected dust so quickly from just my fan just kicking butt and blowing, you know, like, you know, a hot damn. And that means they're doing their job. That means they're doing their job. It also means I probably need to change my apartment air filter. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get uh, with, uh, with Gail on that. Yeah, which probably should have bugged me today, but I'm like, no. Nah, Wasn't I'm he here? Kind of in the scene. Yeah, he was here. Yeah, well, we were frantically searching the dungeon. The dungeon. The dungeon. Okay, so. So I got several case connectors here, which... It's a bit far, I can't say, I you can't see as well, but... Well, you're not probably going to see inside the darkness here as far as you are, as far as you are away. Uh, That's fair, but... it's Actually, it's fairly clear in there, it just, it's just de decently far away. Yeah. So, I want to show you what kind of behemoth I have to face after I get these cords all connected. Oh, this no. here is the Noctua <laughs> DH-15. This thing is border lighting on it's absurd. Now, I hear a lot of people are like, Ow, oh, why didn't you go water cooled? Well, first off, water cooling is optimal when it's top going down. This case does not have top venting, therefore, not ideal. Back to, you know, back to this, there's, it's not ideal for airflow for that particular kind of deal. So, what did I do? I got the big old heat beast Known as a Noctua DH-15, which normally comes with these beautifully big fans here. Okay, but unfortunately, because of the unusually goofy RAM I got, I had to switch out with another fan here, which was an NFF-12 Chromax, in order to take the intake in and still keep some clearance for my RAM. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here. All right, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and yank off one of these little guys here. I have a low noise adapter. I'm probably going to use that for the back of case one. And I'll just go ahead and connect this Y splitter right here for the CPU so both fans work in sync to do their job. So that'll this, be the final thing you used to put in there, I believe, yes? That'll be the final thing. That's going to be the big PETA shall I say, because that's going to obstruct everything once it goes in. Indubitably. So, we're going to go ahead and take one of these long boys, set them aside. We're going to take this fan right here on the inside of the case, and we're going to hook up this beautiful little Noctua low noise adapt, which has a little capacitor in there or whatever to try to reduce interference noise. And given the proximity it is to my uh, audio, Card, I think that would be the best place for it. I could be wrong, but I'm just shooting in the dark here. Okay, so let's see. That would go. That goes to the top. Yep. Okay. Well, that didn't look like that cord was long enough to go to the top. Okay. So. Really wish this thing had a better zoom function. I thought I'd really be able to see it with the grill hands in the way. Which are surprisingly delicate. When it comes to building computers. Alright. So. As big as a guy as I am, I'm usually pretty gentle. Indeed. With uh, things. Which I think impresses some people that know me. Considering how much of an absolute ox I can be. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've seen him in ox mode. It is... <laughs> Surprisingly scary. Alright, so. We'll get our, get our little uh, hard drive cables here. 
That is not one of them. <laughs> that one did go on the floor. That one went on the floor. Let's see. Nope. Is another load of wedges back here? Oh, well, I got a lot of these uh, four pin Nocto long boys. Interesting. Very interesting. I swore I had one more SD cable. I had a 90 degree connector. Yar, where are you hiding? Oh, don't follow me here. No, don't follow me over here. Don't follow me over here. I don't want to. I don't want to be seen in that way. Do not pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Are you kidding me? I know I unhooked two. I right? don't know where he put it. Uh, should I put on the we're having technical difficulty screen? Do, 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 do. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, ha I have one of those stream, one of those for my stream. <laughs> <laughs> we're having technical difficulties. Please stay home. See, I have, see that's why that's why I have the intermission screen, man. Very helpful. I, I you, may, you may have made fun of, of the streaming platform of my choice, Streamlabs, but at least it gave me an intermission screen. Thank you, Streamlabs, for giving me a free intermission screen. You're welcome, Joey, because you might need it because you bungle a lot. <laughs> I guess they'll follow you with the camera, you know. You could, although I'd advise against it. Yeah, whatever. I'm not playing around with this. Uh... Huh. I'm going to move this back over away from that area. <laughs> Where did that little guy go? Did you throw it on the floor? No. Well, I should have another little baggie that has... Uh, I see three cords on the floor. Okay. That one, that's not a cord. Two, Those two are important. That's an RGB three. cable. I have no RGB. I have no Rigo. We are currently on the search for the legendary MacGuffin. The legendary MacGuffin. The Egg McMuffin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now come on, that, both of those could not have... How did one of those change over to a uh, 90 degree from a... I mean, to a uh, straight angle. Wait, what's that, angle. One, what's that one right down the table? Straight. I see one on the table. Is that on the table? Okay. There's a the 90 degree that I need. Alright. These are all fan connectors. What about the one he's laying on? That's a PCI Express. PCI Express. And behind it? There's no other cable here. Hang on. I'm, I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna have to enter the shop for a minute here. <laughs> and help him search. Oh, I was hoping not to be on camera. But you don't have to be on camera. No, I'm going to be on camera now because I'm going to search myself. How did that happen? I don't know what you did. Huh? Oh, there's one of my cables I was missing. What about, what about this one? This is the other one I saw behind Mobius. That's not the one I want. I don't want a straight one. Damn it. I need a 90 degree. Which I could have swore I had over here. Because I know I took it out of the case. And here's the microphone. Being bumped into. There it goes. There it goes. There's my phone. Oh, come on, man. Fudge it. I'm just going to use the straight angle. I was really preferring not to use the straight angle. They took the Dragon Ball. Okay. All right. Scoop. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get to that. Wait, uh, where's the yellow one? It has to be yellow. Have to use the yellow. Have to use the yellow okay. one. Hello, guys. I am with back on the camera. Yeah. What do you say? I don't normally make mistakes like this, but apparently I'm making them now. So, well, deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> and that, this is my message from Little Mia. <laughs> little Mia. <laughs> Oh my knee. <laughs> right. So, 
sometimes we just gotta roll with the punches, son. So, here we go. You, you know, after you get all hooked up, you're gonna find another one, right? I absolutely will, and I'll lose my damn mind. Yep. Because that is how this works. <laughs> I know this game. I know it all too well. I have played this game, I have won this game. I have dealt and I have fought this game. And why am I sweating so hard? Holy crap. I've only had two shots. I'm not that hot from alcohol. Let's see. Okay, so, moving forward. I mean, you are technically working and, you're, and doing a strenuous task. If this is strenuous, I'm way out of shape. No, <laughs> no, it's not strenuous. I meant, I, meant str I meant strenuous as far as your mind, but okay. Oh, yeah, my brain shouldn't be overheating me like this. Okay, so. We will run through this little I mean, Mobius game. technically isn't on right now, so you cannot blame Mobius for raising your temperature by three or four degrees. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. Shut up. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this... Okay, yeah. Are we gonna run it? Out the back! Out the back with ya! And now, and now you can see that as I adjust the camera slightly. There's a little hole in the back of the case. Run it right back here. Yeah, boy. Are you ready, kids? <laughs> aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear ya! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh, where the hell is my screws that I need for the fan? <laughs> What's this bullshit? I'm overheating a festwitty man! <laughs> if computer nonsense is something you wish, <laughs> then get in the freezer and get my mom's fish! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And if you're if you're watching this, Mary, you did leave the fish here. She did. She absolutely did. <laughs> okay, this is gonna take a moment here. I gotta squat down and get all up and personal with this fan. Oh old, my God. old Dan in the fan, like old man in the sea. Uh, okay. I will say, I do like. They're fitting for the 120 millimeter fan because it is literally glove tight. Once you consider getting the sag out of my video card and uh, having to put the power supply in, you have no wiggle room hardly whatsoever. It is basically holding down the fort for the whole damn computer. Not also, sure how I feel about that entirely, but I like how clean it looks. Also, just a side note. Mm. We are approach. We are approaching the one hour point at this point. That's and we cool. may, we may, we may have to segment this. Whatevs. Just because YouTube does not does not enjoy hour long videos. YouTube can eat my dick. I'm doing this for the fr you know for the friends. This is fair. <laughs> I'm doing this for the people who got in here on this. And plus, I'll do video editing. I'll chop it down. Yay! Yay! I'm brilliant! I know what I'm doing! <laughs> no. 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 Alright, so. Check this shit out. This case came with some cool little rubber grommets. Grommet, grommet. Uh, rubber rings, grommets, grippers, anti-shock, you know, feet, whatever you want to call it, okay? Y'all use your technical terms up there for the hard drive. So, what does that mean? It means I find a place for this hard drive I like, I slip it in the hole, I slip it down, guess what, it's mounted now. Woo! I wanna hold it there, guess what I do? Instead of uh, my way of having a... I whip out one of these, I screw it down, boom, the hard drive's where I need it to be. Yeah, his, his way is much easier than my traditional way of, I have, I have this little carrier case that you have to insert it into, screw that down, screw the carrier case down, and then screw, then once again screw the device down to the carrying case. It's like an, it's like an extra six to seven different screws. Too many screws, too many problems. I don't want those problems to be my problems. So Liam Lee, I commend you for making an amazing case feature that while, albeit simple, is effective. 
it is extremely effective. Okay, so we screw that screw down. Boom! First hard drive secure. Second hard drive, E. Come here. Come here. Right here. Come here. That one right there. Mm -mm -mm. Did you memorize which one is which? Huh? Did you memorize which one is which? Oh, hell no. Don't have to. Because really? I'm going by. I haven't placed where they were. Okay. Okay. I didn't change anything on that. Besides, one of the drives are completely empty right now. Really? Yeah, I believe so. Unless I put something on it. Is it, ju is it just the gaming drive I've been using? Yep. Huh. Wow. Well, the other still one's before, it still performs ridiculously well. As it should. Okay, so. As a, as a, bit, as a bit of a uh, telltale for him, he moved his boots in about eight seconds flat. Yeah, it's pretty darn darn dumb. Okay. Corsair. Normally. Oh, sorry. I like the fact that you braided your cables, Corsair. I like the fact that they're the right length, but in a tiny ass, small form factor setup, I have no idea practically how you're going to hook up four SATA devices on one cable, okay? I would have almost rather had one, ca one connector, all these cables going up, and one at the end. It would have made it much cleaner, much nicer. But you know what? I play with what I get, baby. I play with what I get. <laughs> it's all good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to run this scroogey thing through the side here. Up and over. Up and over. And we're going to put just one of them through here. Just enough wiggle room to where I can plug in for hip reel and set a... Yeah. Okay. I'll be plugging that into the top left. Actually, no. I'll plug that into the bottom right. There we go. I believe that's the way I had it originally hooked up. So the bottom right, and then I will tuck it in above the fan. Twist the SATA connector, connector so it does not bump into my power supply fan. So it is snug and under and tucked in away where it's not being a general obstruction to anything particularly. Yes. Beautiful. That's how you manage a cable. Okay. In case you're curious what I'm talking about. Hey, look there. So there's the cable up above the fan, up above the back. And hey, there it is right there. It doesn't look like spaghetti. So it doesn't look like spaghetti, at least on the front side. But no one sees the back side, so no one cares. I care because I have to get back in the back side. Hence, that is what our friends zip you ties spilled, are for. You spilled the, 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 the. As you put it up, the You spilled the screws all over the floor. I'll get them. I'm not worried about those now. Mm. So I need the screws I need. Those are the screws you need. I'll get them. <laughs> mm. So in the top right connector, we'll hook up the secondary drive. And we will run that under the power cable here with a twist and a turn and a manipulation here and there and we should have just a little bit of slack to basically twist in like this and then take this other hard drive plug in which one's which you'll go up here okay so we'll come up and through the hole the hood will know our whole destination. So we will twist and turn it and roll it till it is nice and even and has a nice flow. Then we will make it adjacent with our SATA connector so they're cousins here. We'll take our other grommeted up hard drive, our other four terabytes of goodness. Yum yum. Yum yum. And we will slide it into the middle channel of these eight holes, which are for the 2.5 inch hard drives. 
then we will find out where the L on this connector is. So we'll take that L and we will uh, match it on in by pushing it down into an angle and then matching it up. Just like that, nice clean snap. And this one here will go upside down likely. So we will turn that around and go pop until it's in place. Then we will take the other thumb screw that we have and we will lock it into place. Look at that, we're mostly done with this thing. It's been an hour and part of it was just screwing around. Part of it. Woo! Because someone couldn't find his cables. Eat me. Okay. Nah. Okay, so. Now comes the fun part. Woo doo 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 doo. We have to figure out how to run two PCI Express 6 plus 2s out. Honestly, can I, can I just do this in reverse? Honestly, can I? Because if I can just not have to deal with the ugliness for it going the other way. I would much rather hook in a clean connector outwards. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we can do that. He so he says the he says this. We'll see we'll see how this goes. Well let's see. Here's the connector I got connected to. This is my 180 degree connector. Indeed. Can I connect it in reverse? The answer is this a resounding yes I can. Oh god. So that's the way I'm gonna hook it up. Can I hook? Wait, my bad. Ah, that's the type I. There it is. Oh, 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 yes. Yes, son. Mm. Some bit of a snug fit, eh? Noted. Noted. Yes. Oh, that is. Quite snug. Let's let's compare that real quick, just to make sure we're not janking it up. We have to make sure our pin alignment is similar. And the answer is no. So we do not want to do that. Okay. Corsair, your funky one wayness. Mm. It's fine. I'll work with it. Just like Happy Buddha. Just like Happy Buddha. <laughs> Today I will be showing you how to connect this computer in the jankiest way possible without looking so jank. My name is so jank. I thought your name was Kevin. You want not to know my Anglo name? Mm. <laughs> Didn't you actually work with someone who claimed his name was Kevin? Yes, and I'm pretty sure his name was Mamaguri and his name was from Hyderabad. <laughs> Just saying. Alright. So, can we, in theory, run both of these out in parallel with each other ever so snugly out the back? This is what you call a challenge, my friend, because we're changing one little thing. I ran the PCI Express card off of one of these since it has two connectors at the end. And while I'm sure that might work to some extent, I believe you only have 150 watts per uh, connector here, maximum output, and the card pushes out an astounding 240 watts. So, we have to be well aware of where our limitations are and see if that gives any whatsoever performance increase. Because if it does, kind of a big deal. Which she has had had me memorize frame rates upon different programs. That I have. That way we know for sure if we can get away with using a single connector or if we need to use two connectors. Something, tell, something tells me he's probably correct and we should be using two. 
I'd like to believe we could just use one for both, but more power is more better because that provides more smooth, consistent flow. So and yeah. the work and the workflow we have been putting on on him is considered extremely strenuous to any other computer, and yet he has still not gone beyond twenty percent of his potential workload. <laughs> That's soon to change. Because my job that I'm going to do is try to make it to where both of us are working from it, and I am a damn power user. You are. Especially once I actually start doing stuff like graphic design instead of dicking around and farting around and watching videos and non-productive lazy boy crap. To be fair, I did bug him to draw. Yep, but drawing's a mood-based thing and I was kind of a slump because my work was killing me. That is fair. Now he only works three days a week. Yeah, we'll see. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll see. And suddenly I hear I hear the gato phone going off. Oh, do not. I would even start with that. <laughs> and you know and you know who they call if they can't get him? They call you to get a hold of me and I don't like it. Because I know I live with him. <laughs> and they're really good at that. And just be like, I don't work there anymore, let me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I officially had that power now. You do. But they'll still fucking call me, and you know it. They better not. It's considered harassment at that point, I believe, so if you don't work there. Yeah, I, I do wonder how I do wonder how much they're going to care. We'll see. Okay, so. We will push in this. Pow. Because guess what? They still haven't updated the text thing. I still get the text messages. Yep, I know. Ooh. Ooh, that might not work. That might not work for what I want it to do. Yep, I have to squat down in here. And connect Pop. the video. Make Pop a squat in your in your uh, extremely tight pants. Pop a squat and Papa Smurf. Uh, let's see. My two favorite musicians. Papa <laughs> Smurf? It's a rap joke. I know Papa, Ro Papa Roach and whatnot. I never heard of Papa Smurf. Mm -hmm. I know what Smurfing is. <laughs> You're a funky guy, man. <laughs> and that I am. I try. I'm trying to be as much of an entertainment factor as I can be. Good. Because apparently, good. I because I am supposed to learn how to be an entertainment factor because I'm a Twitch streamer. That's right. If you're gonna be a homebody, you gotta learn to make home money. And in order to make home money, you gotta be kind of funny. So right uh, now, funny looking is what you got going for you. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 that, that's an insult. Hang on a minute. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Scoochie, scoochie around right here. So, this, this, this right here, gave me a haircut. I don't think I look that bad. You don't look bad at all. You look a lot better. Okay, than you, can, you can you can you can leave if I look bad in the comments below. Thank you. And you can and you can all, and then I can give him a hard time. Thanks. Oh, well, it's either that or the bowl cut, looking like you know, Mo Howard. <laughs> Come back, my camera. Yeah, I think I might eventually change those cables out to straight eights, but. For now. How much do those cost? How much, how much is that going to set us buying? Ah, probably about 30 bucks. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeah. Because you and you and your, you, you like your expensive blue cables. Well, I mean, you're going to do a theme, you might as well follow it through, right? That is fair. <laughs> However, the blue ca those blue cables were, did, did run us what, how much? At least they worked, right? <laughs> I didn't buy the blue cables yet. I thought you bought the blue cables. I did not buy the blue cables. Oh. This is all the original cables that came with the Corsair SF750 power supply. I am simply making better use of them than the average person. Okay, well. 
It look it looks it doesn't look like complete spaghetti, so you know. Uh, that's because I have tinkered around with this setting enough times to kind of get ideal cable management. Out of a less than ideal setup. Okay, so. So in other words, you perform compute computer uh techno sorcery. <laughs> techno sorcery. Uh, I was. Hmm. What's up? I, I'm trying to think of the right way to word this. What's another word for operation? Or, uh... Surgery, yeah, yes. Computer surgery. That Computer would surgery, yes. Computer surgery enough times. Lord knows you had to take mine apart a couple of times. Uh, yep. Yeah. And you've gone through April... Uh, this is technically April 10... Yep. April, April, April nine is sitting in the other room right now. I, I like April nine. April nine is extremely sassy. It <laughs> likes like, to give it likes to give him grief, but I really do appreciate it. I don't like anything that gives me grief. Can I get? Can I get? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. I don't like that grief. I don't like none of that grief, especially <laughs> from you, young man. <laughs> April April nine is by is defined as the sassy woman. <laughs> the sassy woman indeed. Tremendous pain in the asses. <laughs> okay, and there we go. So those cables have been bundled together accordingly. Yay! Can I get a close up of that? Second, gotta get this power adapter thing in here. Ideal location. Alright, so primary cable management, aside from the audio cable, which will be hidden underneath the giant heat sink here soon, has been established. Alright, so it looks pretty good so far from my angle. Yep. Now then, hook up this hard drive here, which is currently obstructing part of my view. It's obstructing my view of Venus. I must blow it up. <laughs> so what, what, what was that? What was that thick of dynamite call again? The P32Q space modulator. Right. And what were you going to do with that? I'm going to blow up the Earth. Well, I'll have a good time with that. You make me very, very angry. <laughs> I'm not even trying now. I can tell. <laughs> I've been able to do it on point. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Okay. Oh, get in there. Get in there, oh lord of jank. Before I give you a naughty spank. <laughs> okay. This is definitely considerably a bit more mass in the ass. Hi. <clears throat> I'm Super Kami Guru, and I'm the one that's not judging you by your appearance. <laughs> Good God, what the hell is that? How'd it get so fat? Don't you people sustain yourself on water? <laughs> <sighs> so he calls himself Kami, huh? <laughs> no, so he calls himself God. Pretentious prick! <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Now on you shall call me <laughs> Super Kami. No, wait. Super Kami Guru. <laughs> Can I just call you Guru for short? Super Kami Guru approves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was not fun. Bit more snug than before, I suppose, because I just added a few millimeters of cable mass previously where there was not. Slight modification. Lee and Lee, next time I would advise you to make a bigger hole slot behind the video card and 
a bigger hole slot for the front top of the case for the TU-150, any variants that you make in the future. And I would love to hear your progress on that, should you make another case of this caliber. I'm sure they probably will. I almost Wasn't it on the bestseller list? I suppose so, for this kind of form factor, yeah. And the uh, X-58 was the alternative uh, unit I was looking at for my birthday, but... Wasn't that slightly bigger? I don't know if it was slightly bigger, per se, but it was definitely uh, glass and uh, glass and mesh, and I don't know how well that really would have vibed. Okay, so... Oh my god! Huh? Okay, so... Let you curling around for down there. Trying not to block the view! Oh, <laughs> you're a funny guy. <laughs> so we go ahead and tuck this cable right on in the side here and we get this all jumbled up here I think we'll uh, last a little bit of it shall I say here Zip tie. Got thinner zip ties. Pretty sure I got thinner ones. Where you at? Where you at? Zip tie set two. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. How you doing over there, Joseph? Doing fine, doing fine. I had a bit of a uh, hearing loss adjustment. Hearing loss adjustment? I need to I need to scratch the ear. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Mm. This one definitely looks a lot snugger than before. I might be able to get the camera in there for a snugger close up here in just a second. And then standing. Okay, let's see. You wanna try to move the camera a little bit closer for that? So I want to try to get this guy looped right there, so you can just okay. loop Okay, camera's a little closer, and then just tilt her a little bit, and there we go. Okay, and we will get on in here. We will show flip this one. Yeah. Leaving one final power connector. Take this. Oh, okay. We'll take these ones here. The big bad. Okay, so I have tried everything I could to get Corsair's janky, tight, mm -hmm. unyielding black spaghetti farm to work for me for this. And the ultimate solution I came up with was a 90 degree power connector that goes right through the board 
and contorting it into this shape memory here to basically make it connect directly to the power supply. Keeping it out of the way of my improvised wind tunnel that I have invented here in this thing. Okay. It, it, they can see it in excruciating detail now. Okay. So. Because uh, I pushed it a little closer. <laughs> I figured I'd give them a little bit more detail of, of what's going on. Alright, so. You can see this, you can see certainly the spaghetti farm in the back. I think I'm, yeah, I'm obstructing a little bit of the light, so I'm going to move a little bit to the side here. I think, yeah, it's a little bit better. The uh, natural light that we still have comes through. The bloom as it punctures through. That and the, uh, the god light, which is currently trying to blind me. Well, quit looking at it. I'm, I'm not looking at it! Don't be a moth! I'm not a moth. <laughs> I'm not a moth! I am the monarch! The <laughs> mighty monarch! I am the monarch! <laughs> you know nothing of evil! <laughs> Alright. Yeah. And then there's, the, then there's the Red Skull who knows all about the monarch, and uh, I thought he was actually really cool. I th what was his name again? The Red Guy? Red Death. Red Death. Sorry, the Red Death. Okay. Really cool super villain, actually. Well, he is so much like me, it makes me smile. Alright, the final touch. The big coup de gras is now up to the humongous chungus. Woo! Okay. For this, we will be using Noctua's NTH1 10 gram thermal paste, which is one of the better ones rated out there that isn't made of conductive metal. And for this, you can unscrew the tip, so it keeps it nice and gooey. Gooey! Gooey. And then you will put a pea-sized blob on the heat sink. Now, there's a million different ways you can do this. I've seen people do the stripe method, the X method, the plus method, and whatnot. I find just getting an equal distribution of a blob, same result. I've tried it every possible way. Okay, it all works. Either, you know what, you can even just go a little bit overkill and just add a bit more for shits and giggles, you know. It's not going to hurt it now. So this is not, this is non-conductive paste, This correct? is non-conductive paste. Making sure, making sure I get that in there. Okay. Now then, with that in mind, we shall take this enormous hunk of steel, or aluminum, or whatever. Yeah, aluminum. As long as it's not Chinesium. No Chinesium. Noctua does not play when it comes to their mega fan design here, okay? And so, the fun part I have to do is kind of fiddle finagle this connector in before I get the giant block of death in. <laughs> because fiddle finagling is not fun. And the original color that was with those would be a little tad things that he pulled out was red. He, made, he actually changed it into blue, which, in my honest opinion, it looks a lot better. <laughs> I personally think blue was the color to go for this particular build. It just, it said cool. It said nice. It said, this is what it feels like to be on the edge of awesome. Nice and <laughs> I figured if I'd build a secondary build, of the similar nature, I'd probably make it red, and I would call it Infinitas. Yes. Okay. Though it will still not burn as brightly as my Wonder Toaster. <laughs> well, I could have put a bunch of LEDs and dumb shit in here and could have got a, you know, plexiglass side panel for this. Where? I just... It's not going to fit. I have... RGB connector right there. Okay. Could have ran a strip right along here, right along here, right along here, right along the back of underneath the video card. Could have ran five strips in here easily. Could have lit this whole I mean, thing up like a damn Christmas tree. I mean, he says that, but and looking looking at looking at it from a personal view, it it, it looks a lot tighter than it looks a lot tighter than what he's making out to be. <laughs> so I, I I don't know about that. <laughs> 
If he says he can do it, he most likely can do it, but I, I think it'd be a little bit tighter than he'd like. That's just my, that's just my two cents. I know nobody asked, but since I'm the camera guy, I get that. I get to right. say something. Now then. And then we turn it up, flip him. Chromax. Wonderful little connectors here that add a cosmetic oh yeah baby to my case. It is. Turning it from this knobby looking chunky heat sink to something more. Okay, so each oh, one of these have inserts. I'm gonna go with the chroma blue. And these slide in right in back here and just pop back into place. And you'll see they had a really nice cosmetic. Do you take your third shot there, sir? I have not yet. Would you like a shot glass? Mm, maybe. We'll see. Okay, so I will get this guy here locked into place. Let's take it down here. Hmm. Ideally, you like to go about two fins, I'd say, when you go to slide these uh, retainer pins in. And about how, about how much would that be? Two fins, question mark? Two fins. So two fins is what you want to have for these clips, okay? These little clips hold these on. These don't look like much, but they got a magnet on this side and this side. The purpose that they say they have is to hold these on nicely and snug, okay? So... I'm going to sit them right on top of the heat sink, go two fins down, put the back flat boy underneath and the rounded end on top. Okay, and we'll save these for the last once we get the major fan in. Okay, now we have one connector we got to make sure is connected in here because it's in a very awkward, very difficult to get to place, which will require some finger jangling. Jingle jangle. Finger jangle. Finger jangle. I've already done this before and somehow not messed up my fingers, although I always anticipate every time I stick my fingers this close to a knock to a fan, uh, well, heat sink, that my fingers are ultimately kind of free game, fair game. It's free real estate. Indeed. <laughs> okay, so. So as I've said, he has a very gentle touch, and I'm pretty sure he can get it. He will get it in and out of there without any finagling. Just a roll of the fingers. And all, all the knuckle. Roll of the fingers, and then we line up the boxes. One's kind of off at a 15 degree angle, and Do you boom. need a tape measure? Connected. Okay. So, now we just connect the final fan. And this right here is an NFA 15. And we just slip that. What does that stand for? I don't know. Noctua fan A15? <laughs> I'll look it up later. Nice flow. Something like that. <laughs> All right, where is the big screwdriver? Big flat. This one I had two of them down here. This is over here. Oh, there it is right there, I think, on the couch. Yeah. Okay. This right here is going to get handy for putting a final clip at the very bottom here, because this, this is always the fun part. See, I'm helping. You are helping. Okay, so, take the flathead and push against that until it locks. Take the flathead and push against this end until it locks. And just like that, we just put the cosmetics on and Mobius is now finally complete. And we'll get a full, a full 
close up of the completed of the completed mug, yes. So we just slide these guys right on in here. Which is really nice. They they're really easy to slide in on from what from how he's making it look. But then again, this is Dan that we're talking about. He makes everything look easy. a lot easier than it really is, believe me. So the Silverstone air filters. First one magnetically clips onto the front of the case. Nice so it, and beautifully. Magnetic, those are magnetic? They are magnetic. Oh, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Then we'll take the second one and put it on the bottom inside of the case. Because usually, usually magnets and computerized components are... Uh, that's for hard drives, because those are magnetically written. Uh, otherwise, the magnetic strength of something like this is so negligible, it wouldn't do a dang thing. Right. Otherwise, we'd have to worry about stupid stuff like the neodymium magnets in the handle itself. That's fair. <laughs> Which are easily eight times stronger than what I'm using here, or these refrigerator magnet grade fan deals. Okay, so right. we flip up the front of Mobius here. We clip on the top. We clip on the front. We clip on the back. Nice and smooth, no bulging. Beautiful. Okay. And then we flip this thing around to reveal the internals. The finished, the finished product. Let's go and ahead and get on the zoom in there, Joseph. Boy, is he beautiful. And we have completed product you can see we we even we even put the little stickers on him he's he's, he's perfect he is amazing does Our, it? yes good oh yeah no they can see they can see the whole they can see the whole thing now i got the whole thing and you completely in the shot because i bungled that, that that's on me <laughs> now but, did you uh do you think the little blues i put on the middle fan actually complete the look yeah no that makes the look 100 times better actually yeah i figured you would like that <laughs> Little Rather tiny than, things. Little, little tiny things that just kind of complete complete it. Yeah, no, yeah. that's... Instead of being black in the middle? No, it, it needs to be blue. It needs to complete the look. No, it looks a lot better than it did. Yeah. And he's going to finally... Oh! And we're going to go ahead and pause it. All right, stop yeah. it there. And stop it. All right. So, we've got this bad boy set up here. Good old Mobius. Tell me that ain't pretty. Tell me that beautiful blue hue is not pretty. Hey, look at that. You can even see the ram hiding in there. <laughs> yeah. All nice and set up. Beautiful blue. Let's take it over here. Get a little bit of love there. Huh? So, let's go ahead and open up the armory crate here. Let's see what we're running at. Yeah, 4,200 hertz, baby. <clears throat> Temperature, 46 Celsius. We've been sitting here for a bit now. Okay. Usage, 1% of its power. And then jump to 4%. 4% to show off. And back to 1. And then yeah. back to 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he does like to show off. <laughs> and let's see. Let's pull up. Let's pull up the task manager here. We'll just go ahead and drop this bad boy right over here on the other screen. I want you to keep an eye on these numbers right up here. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and cause a little trouble here. Games. Joseph, give me a game I should launch real quick, just for shits and giggles. Uh... Fuck it. Which one you are you three? All right, are you three? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. Because that one has all the beauty, all the beauty on it, right? Well, it is fairly demanding, and it's Fucking fairly right. current. Okay. Let's see. Continue. 
Load the game up. Boom. End of the game. Now then. Resident Evil 3. 13% processing power here. I mean, if I went a little bit further in and actually did, actually did the, the uh, fight that's there, I'm mm -hmm. sure it won't jump up a little bit because there's a shit ton of zombies that will spawn. And, you know, for the record here, we do have HDR actually on the monitor, so that is a little bit is of a performance hit. It is. Okay. It absolutely is. Okay. And for the record, in case there's any question about it, let's see, display. Let's go ahead and make sure HDR is on for the game. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I have noticed with Resident Evil, it's kind of weird once you do some graphical option changes. Especially when you kind of get tabbed through here. So, we'll turn Nightlight off here. So, we'll return the game. So, now we got HDR on. Ooh, 14% to 15%. Okay. Mind you, we got other things running here. Resident Evil seems to be the big eater, though. Okay. So, we'll go to Options. Graphics. What, what resolution is that? Oh. No. Yes, absolutely. Why well, are you giving me a weird resolution, my friend? Okay, let's see. So we got refresh rate up to 240 hertz. Yeah, baby. Can I video? Be set up with the uh, stuff you had set, right? Yeah, I'm going to need a 12 gig card in order to really push this thing out to its whole thing here. Biometric lighting. Ooh. Didn't you know it could do that? No, I thought I had all this bumped up before. Motion blur? Never. Uh, Fuck that. Depth of field? Know. Useless. Let's see. Fidelity, upscaling, whatnot. On. Okay. Room is on. All, 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 the, all of it is more or less max. Okay. So, there we go. That is the full effect of Resident Evil 3. Okay. Get towards some light over here. Not gonna look super great on camera. It's not the point. We're just basically trying to show off that we are barely budging this guy. Okay. So that's just a sample of good old Mobius. Yeah.